the next one, we're going to be given the remainder. So we're told now that we want to find k when x cubed plus kx squared minus 2x minus 3 is divided by x plus 2 gives us a remainder of 1. So in this case, we're trying to determine what k is, what this k value is. So all we do is we take this polynomial, use this polynomial as we normally would, and plug in our value from this divisor, set it equal to 1, because that's what our remainder theorem tells us, and then solve for k. So all we need to do. So let's go through and do that. Our a value, of course, in this case, is going to be minus 2. So we're just going to put everywhere there's an x, a minus 2. Minus 2 cubed plus k times minus 2 squared. Minus 2 times minus 2 minus 3 is equal to 1. So that's just using the remainder theorem. We haven't solved anything. We haven't determined anything. We've just used the remainder theorem. So negative 2 cubed becomes negative 8 plus negative 2 squared is 4, so we're going to have 4k plus 4 minus 3 equals 1. So this is going to become 4k and negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4 minus 3 is minus 7 is equal to 1. So 4k is equal to 8. So k has to equal 2. Again, fairly straightforward. Just using that remainder theorem, applying it in a different way where we're given the k value, or sorry, we're given the x value, we're given the remainder, and we have to determine what the k value is. So now we have this polynomial, kx cubed plus px squared minus x plus 3. And when it's divided by x minus 1, we know the remainder is 4. All right? We want to determine what k and p are when the same polynomial divided by x minus 2 gives a remainder of 21. Now, a lot of information in this question. So what we need to do is first apply the remainder theorem. So we're going to look at the remainder theorem when we're doing this first division, the polynomial divided by x minus 1. So that tells us that we're going to put an x value of 1. So we're going to first use x minus 1. So in this case, we're going to have k times 1 cubed plus p times 1 squared minus 1 plus 3 gives us a remainder of 4. That's just using the remainder theorem. So this equation is going to become k plus p plus 2 is equal to 4. So it's going to become k plus p equals 2. Now, we have two unknowns and a single equation. If we think back to linear systems and solving systems of equations, we need a second equation. And where is that second equation going to come from? Well, it's just going to come from when we divide by x minus 2. So now we have to take this, and everywhere there's an x, we're going to replace it with positive 2. So we're going to have k times 2 cubed plus p times 2 squared minus 2 plus 3. And this time, the remainder is 21. So we're going to have 8k plus 4p. Negative 2 plus 3 is plus 1 equals 21. So 8k plus 4p is equal to 20. And we can actually divide everything by 4, and we get 2k 
plus p is equal to 5. So now we have our two equations. We have two unknowns. Well, what do we have to do? Of course, it's just a system of equations. So let's write the system of equations down. We have k plus p is equal to 2. And what was the second one here? 2k plus p equals 5. Now this doesn't say, like in chapter 1, solve by substitution, solve by elimination. Uh, you can choose whichever method you like. And this is where we're going to use our math logic here. It's already pretty much solved if we just subtract these two. If we just subtract the second equation from the first equation, we're going to get something that solves for one of the variables. So k minus 2k is negative k. p minus p is 0. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So we have a k value equal to 3. So if k equals 3, we just have to go put it back into one of our equations. And let's put it into the first one. 3 plus p is equal to 2. So p is going to equal 2 minus 3. So p is going to equal minus 1. There's our k value. There's our p value. And we have solved it using the remainder theorem. So fairly straightforward. Now, that'll take you through questions 1 through 5 in the textbook. So now you can do questions 1 to 5 in the polynomial section. And what we're going to do is we're going to extend this and use the remainder theorem to start factoring polynomials that are not quadratics. So that's kind of the steps that we're leading up towards, is factoring things that are not quadratics, but higher level at the polynomial, polynomial level. So for those of you that are not in class, this will end. For those of you in class, we're going to do one more question, which will be one of the quiz questions. And then we'll end the class. So we'll see everyone next time.